82 degrees in Los Angeles. Is that right, Pinky? That's right. 82 degrees. It's really nice and hot here. Oh, you're right. It's, it's, uh, it, it's really uh, heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when you hear that uh, it's so very cold back east. My daughter lived in New Hampshire. She couldn't even get out of her house. She had to call up some friends. They have a snowmobile or a sort of a uh, an auto an auto driven uh, uh, snow uh, remover, mm-hmm. and they had to come over with a truck to see the the, the 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 city cleans the streets, but they will not clean it from the street to your garage. So she couldn't get out of the house, and uh, she had to call some friends. They came over with a snowmobile, and they they uh, cleaned her driveway so she was able to drive out. We've been much more fortunate this year than most as far as uh, Illinois is concerned because it's been a mild winter up until this point, and everybody has their fingers crossed. Well, we got our fingers crossed, too. We're not getting any rain here. We're about three inches behind on rain. Yeah. We hope we don't have a drought. But in a sense, it's very good because of the terrible fires we've had. They've done a lot of reseeding, and we had a slight rain, and we hope that it'll catch on. We had a chance to talk briefly yesterday, and I found out that when you were in vaudeville, you played Bloomington, didn't you? Bloomington? I want to tell you something. I couldn't think of a name yesterday, but I remember I mentioned about a girl who's in pictures, and uh, she had the same name as these people that I worked on the bill with. Their name was the Belfords, and they, they lived in Bloomington, and uh, they did this Risley act. And I, I often wonder whether she was related to them, but perhaps not. But they were a wonderful act. Okay, now that kind of an act is a juggling act where the, the one guy is on his back, is that not right? Juggling act. You mean they juggle the people around? With with their feet? With their feet, yes. Okay, it's really not a call. It's not a juggling act, it's called a Risley act? A Risley, yes. Okay. The. And, I was just going to ask you about that because you worked a, you worked a lot in vaudeville before your TV days, and uh, maybe just having you on the air well, here. Well, I'll tell you something. The reason why I, I love the show is because being a comedian, and although I was a punk kid, they said, come on, Pinky, we're going to put you in the act like a little laughter piece. And they, I came on the stage, and uh, they used to tumble me around on their feet. And, and you know, it's just frightening and yet enjoyable. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, one man to have like a table, and uh, it's, he's got a grooved out piece of wood covered with velvet, and he sits in that, and it holds his, his body, and his feet is in the air. His feet are in the air, and uh, a person is bent over, holding his two legs with his hands, and he's rolled around on the, on the feet of this person, and then they throw you around here. It's, it's really... It's a wonderful act. It's an act that's gone. You won't see them anymore. Not very often, at least, unless maybe you can catch uh, some maybe kind. Maybe in circuses you'll see them, but not in... Uh, well, there's no more in vaudeville. There's no more stage show, so... I want to talk to, I want to talk to you about the Pinky Lee Show, because that was sort of a one-of-a-kind show, wasn't it? The only kind. There is nothing like it before. I was reading the paper this morning. You know, it's, it's a, a little after 9 here. It's 11 o'clock where you are. Right. And uh, I'm still in bed. And uh, I'm reading the paper, and I'm reading about the ratings of some of the shows that are on, highly publicized shows. And you know something, it, it, it's really heartbreaking, the millions that are spent on shows, and uh, they're not watched, they're not enjoyable, and uh, they're going all out in the wrong direction. The Pinky Lee Show was a show that came out with no fanfare. It brought millions into the fold, and I left them with a lot of love in their hearts. I brought a lot of entertainment into the house, a little bit of slapstick, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it's a shame. It's a show that's greatly needed, but go try to fight City Hall. You know, I am not a, a salesman. I'm not an agent, and I can't sell Pinky Lee. So, uh, of course, I myself wouldn't work. I'd love to find another personality that I could develop into a Pinky Lee because they need this type of comedy and they need this type of entertainment, but unfortunately it's not to be had. Since it was a black and white show, what color was your jacket? My jacket was black and white. Oh, I had several of them, but the black and white. I always I always remember the uh, checkered jacket and the checkered uh, bowler hat or derby hat. The hat was a, a brown check, but uh, the other, my shirt was a red and white check and my tie was red. The pants were black and white check. I accumulated like hash, you know. <laughs> but uh, it 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 turned like I always have a, a sort of a saying: my check turned into cash, you know. 
All right. Pinky Lee is our guest this morning. I have to break for a commercial or two, Pinky. Oh, that's all right. But we'll be right back. It's uh, 10 minutes past 11. It was sometime between November 27th and November 30th that the Gamma Phi Beta Sorority House at 602 South Fell Avenue in Normal was the scene of a burglary. Entry was gained through a window on the east side of the building. All of the rooms in the house were ransacked. Taken was more than $11,000 worth of merchandise and cash, including a color television set, a stereo system, typewriter, radios, cameras, calculators, and 180 pieces of jewelry. Aid Crime Stoppers of McLean County is offering a reward of up to $500 for information that will lead to the arrest and indictment of the person or persons responsible for this burglary. You may contact Aid Crime Stoppers at 828-1111 or write them at Post Office Box 1311, Bloomington, Illinois, 61701. All information is strictly confidential, and if you choose, you may remain anonymous. WJBC, sharing and caring in McLean County. Save now during Carson's January Linen Sale. Save 15 to 25 percent on Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog sheets and towels. The comfort pouch by Whiting is only $19.99. Fight winter chill with soft, cuddly sheets and save 10 to 15 percent. Save 15 to 25 percent on Royal Velvet towels and bath rugs by Fieldcrest. Save 20 to 35 percent on the Sand Dunes Comforter by Whiting. Save now during Carson Peary Scott and Company's January Linen Sale. Thinking about Christmas? Then you'll want to pay special attention this week to the third of four special weeks of Christmas in your penny saver. This special Christmas section has great ideas for gifts from your kitchen and special articles on holiday cooking and baking. It's also loaded with recipes for your kitchen and lots of Christmas shopping ideas from local merchants. Remember to watch for this special Christmas section in your penny saver. There's a uh, rumor that circulated, and in fact, uh, gee, I, I, there have been several big rumors over the years that have circulated, but the one that sticks in my mind when I, when I think of you, Pinky Lee, is the one that you had a heart attack on the air. We well, were talking about... Um, absolutely false. I didn't have a heart attack, and I got thousands and thousands of telegrams and telephone calls when it happened, and they said, we hope that, you're, that you get well, and so forth. So it wasn't a heart attack. It was actually started from a nasal drip. I have a, I had a terrible sinus condition, and the nasal drip used to poison my stomach, and I used to put in so much effort and time to get the show on. You know, the show, well, we did the show live, and it was kinescoped. That's the same as you'd call taping. Kinescoped at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which meant it was being seen at 5 o'clock in New York City and 4 o'clock in the Midwest, where you are. Mm -hmm. And... I would gulp a sandwich down, and it would lay there, and on top of this nasal drip, it poisoned me, and I had the same symptoms. I just collapsed. They rushed me to the Burbank Hospital, the um, St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank. They brought in a heart specialist, and they said, this guy had no heart trouble. And they finally found out that it was not that at all. But the public thought it was a heart case, and to this, time, to this day, people think uh, that I had a heart case because a lot of them say pinky how's your ticker mm -hmm. and what are you going to say yeah but, but again those were the days of live tv so whatever people saw i mean that was it oh there were some wonderful little events happened some of the things i did a commercial i think it was for tricky rolls and uh, i said gee i wish i had a penny i suppose not to have any money to go and buy it a little girl got, got up from the from the from the audience i got a penny pinky here i'll give it to you so you can buy a tricky roll <laughs> Let me see. I got a book here, and it talks about TV shows from 1946 through the present. It mentions the Pinky Sh Pinky Lee show. Uh, one one show was called Those Two, and I guess that was on from that 19. Was a different show. That, that was one show I started out with Vivian Blaine, and then she was replaced by a girl from California called Martha Stewart. Okay, that was on from what 1951 to 1953. It says here. Well, it was not. It was not 1953. It was closer to 54. But um, you know, dates are are. Uh, put down by people who write these books, and they're not too accurate. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was it ran a little over three years. Now, were those those were adult shows, though, and then you had a, ki a kid show, too, right? Yeah, I was... Uh, and you want to hear something funny? Sure. The show was fired because it became a kid show. We, we, we broke all records with rating, but Procter & Gamble had a policy, no kid shows, just adult shows. To this day, their biggest thing is soap operas, you know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a policy of, of an adult show, and they bought this as an adult show 
But I was getting thousands upon thousands of letters from parents and children. And uh, I, not Vivian Blaine, but I, Pinky Lee, got these letters, and they said, look, you're selling product for us. And, and, and the show has got number one rating, but it's against our policy. We're going to have to drop the show. Hmm. You know, the show ran 50 weeks a year, not like they do today. They'll put on six or 13 weeks. I was signed for uh, 50 weeks. That's incredible, really. And I was doing three shows a week, so you can figure 150 shows a year. Mm -hmm. What would you say um, is wrong with uh, television today? I know we were talking about uh, some of the ratings and all the work that goes into some shows and the big budgets. Maybe they spend more money on advertising a show than they actually do for the production of it. I'm not sure. Well, they spend a lot of money for advertising, but they're spending a lot of money on shows. I've seen some shows that my wife and I look at, uh, at each other in wonderment and we say, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. They put these shows on, and uh, really, they're, they're, they're atrocious. Mm -hmm. You do see some cute things and some, uh, some wonderful, entertaining shows, but they're in the minority. They're very few. Mm -hmm. But the, the, basically, a bunch of these shows are, um, are really and truly bad. Now, I, I was reading this morning in the paper that a show NBC has called 96, how they've advertised this show. It supposedly originated in Australia, and it's quite risque, or, you know, it's all based on below the belt and sex. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was something like 56 or 65 in, in rating. Uh, evidently, uh, a lot of the people don't go for it. You know the shows that are going over? Uh, <laughs> some of the shows, and they say they, they, they build these shows to please the people in Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, shows that, that are uh, like Enos and uh, the Dukes of Hazard. I don't watch those shows, but evidently they're the shows that, that, uh, that uh, I like because they're down to earth, they're, they're crazy, they're, they're slapsticky, they're broad. And a lot of the shows that uh, border on intelligentsia just don't go. I don't know how to put it, but there are some beautifully written shows that uh, that just haven't cut it. How many writers did you have on the Pinky Lee show? But, uh, I think we had at least five sets of writers. That was uh, ten writers. We might have had six teams, but I don't quite remember. I think it was five teams of writers, no question about that. Mm -hmm. Now, you worked in uh, Burlesque and also Vaudeville, as we mentioned, but back in those days, you wouldn't think of putting anything on television that would be in a burlesque show, would you? Or would well, you say that today's... News for you, burlesque is cleaner than it, than it, it, is, it, it is in television today. That we didn't... I never used the word hell. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was considered the cleanest comedian in burlesque, but there was little situations where uh, certain little expressions used in burlesque, but that's about the size of it. You know, there was one time that I worked in, in burlesque, I, had, I went to burlesque out of desperation. I was hungry. I had a wife and a child to support, and Vaudeville had closed down, stage shows had closed down, and Phil Silvers got me a job in burlesque. And I had to go on the road, and I worked, I think it was St. Louis, and there weren't enough dressing rooms, and I had a dress with one of the strip teasers, several of the strip teasers, so they put up a rope and put a blanket over the center of it, mm -hmm. and I dressed on one side, and they dressed on the other. It couldn't be helped. But if you try to to make a pass at one of these gals, they'd bust in the nose. <laughs> these gals were really, you know, they they took their art seriously, mm -hmm. and they stripped, but that's as far as it went. Yeah. It's 19 minutes after 11 o'clock. Pinky Lee is our guest. Pinky, I don't know if you'd like to take a phone call or two from somebody. Maybe uh, maybe you have some if fans. If anybody's listening they want to ask me a question, I'd be delighted. All right, 829-2345 is our number, or 1-800-322-9377. Pinky Lee, on the phone with us this morning here in Bloomington. Karen, hi. It's Mindy. Guess what? I talked to Melissa today about what Amy said to Sue about Scott, and she told me that she said that he said that... Oh, wait a sec. Mom's coming. Anyway, he actually had the nerve to tell her that he doesn't think she should go out Mindy, get out of the broom closet. When teenagers get on the telephone, they do some pretty strange things for privacy. After all, they have important matters to discuss. Hello, Cheryl? It's me, Sherwood. I was just kind of wondering if you were doing anything two weeks from Friday. Oh, your grandmother's in town again. Come out of the bathroom, Sherwood. 
And bring the telephone with you. So why not give a GTE extension phone this Christmas? All you do is go to your GTE phone mart and pick out a Styline phone. That way you can give your teenagers their privacy. Although, they'll most likely continue doing strange things. Hello, I'd like to order a large pizza with I Love You Cheryl, spilled out in anchovies. The GTE phone mart is located in College Hills Mall in Normal. Old-fashioned goodness in every bite. The imagination. Experience the mouth-watering deliciousness of Prairie Farms. Hey, this sale ends Saturday. Skyler's Picture Place, 1328 East Empire, open Monday through Friday till 8, Saturday till 5. You're on the air with Pinky Lee. Go ahead. I'm just calling to say what we all, as children, enjoyed Pinky Lee, and he always left us laughing. It was entertainment, and I do agree with him that we could take an awful lot of all, uh, no, I think programs, whatever, off the air, and just get back to entertainment. You know, I think basically for education and entertainment is what that te television's for. And uh, I've always enjoyed you, Pinky, and and um, I think a little bit more of you and your type would kind of pick us all up a little bit. And just thanks, that's all. Isn't that sweet? Well, you know, those are the things that I, that I love and the things that at least give me a little bit of sort of a... Of a a desire to, to go on. It's those warm memories and the thought that I left a little bit of love with people and people like me. And uh, I, I, I truly agree with you. We need more of this type of comedy. It's, it doesn't exist anymore. It, it's a shame. It's yeah. really a shame. Well, I agree. I just think a smile goes a long way. Thank you for calling, ma'am. You bet. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let me take another call here. You're on the air with Pinky Lee. Hello, Pinky Lee. Hello, dear. I am a mother and a grandmother, and I would always go in the living room when you came on with my children, and we cer certainly enjoyed you immensely. Isn't that sweet? I wish that we could have another Pinky Lee for our grandchildren now. Well, unfortunately, I haven't found one. I'm, I'm, I've been looking around myself for a, somebody who could be another personality along those lines, a wistful little guy, a guy who's, as we would call, the schnook. Mm -hmm. The guy who who has no meanness in his body, but there's just none around. We have a place out here in Hollywood called the Comedy Store where they try to develop comedians. And honestly, I went there one night, and all they talk about is pot, sex, mm -hmm. and uh, subjects which is not interesting. They walk on the stage. Of course, today, there's a different mode of dressing. Everybody dresses like they just rolled out of bed. They're all wearing Levi's and dirty shirts. They come on the stage wearing that form of dress. There's no such thing as propriety anymore. The whole type of entertainment is below the belt. It's not right. No, but something needs to, something, someone that is strong enough can turn it around. After a while. I, I don't know what to say. I, uh, you see, when my wife and I, of course we have two children, they're grown children, and I'm still a young man, so to speak, but uh, my wife and I figured, well, there'll come a day when I won't be working anymore, that I, I, I'll give it up. I've always said to my wife, I want to retire. And from the stage of the dunes in Las Vegas, I said to the people, well, this is my last performance. I'm quitting while I'm ahead. So I, I, I mean that we saved our nickels and have a little financial security, and we live a very, very subdued life, very quiet life. I have no friends in show business. I never mingled with actors. I, my, my friends are all out of the business. And uh, I have always tried to be a clean comedian. I've always tried to do what the people want. There has been some comedians who've been very clean. My favorite comedian, of course, is Sid Caesar. I don't know whether you like him or not. Yeah. I've always loved him because he's a gentleman off the stage and a very sweet person. And there are other comedians who are very nice, but there are some comedians who feel that the only way they can get laughs are by being dirty. This is not, this is not right. It's not good. And the people don't want it. But you... And millions of others can't do anything about it because it's the people who control the networks who buy what they want. It's what they want to do, and you haven't got a thing to say about it. Well, maybe it's enough of us turn off some of these dials while we can do something about it. Ma'am, I thank you for calling. It's 25 minutes after 11 o'clock. You worked uh, with a lot of the pros. Jack Benny, I know, is one of them. You knew Jack Benny, didn't you, Pinky? Yes, a very wonderful, sweet man. A very sweet man, and nothing like he was depicted on radio as a, as a cheap chiseler, 
He was nothing at all like that. He was a very philanthropic person, very extremely wealthy, of course, mm -hmm. and he gave an awful lot of money away to worthy causes. We have a few people in the business that are very publicized. I won't mention any names. They're very well publicized, and they're extremely, extremely wealthy, but they are not nice. You're on the air with Pinky Lee. Go ahead, please. Yes, Pinky Lee, I truly can remember you. Oh, and yes, I'm so happy. talk a little louder, dear? I, I truly can remember you, yes. and I'm so happy you have made the comments about the way of life that you believed in living and living today because that's why we have turned our television off many times. We just can't take the smut. Isn't it awful? Terrible. It's just terrible. Now, all the shows, they've got shows on, and they said this show is going to be a real shift. This, this, this season is going to be a real shift. They got too close for comfort, comfort. It's a living, and they got 96. And there's no limit as to where they're going. I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. There's no reason for it. We used to have shows years ago, like the Dick Van Dyke show. Uh, uh, it was a delightful show. Yes. And uh, uh, there was a lot of shows in the in the uh, dramatic field, like the Defenders. I mean, shows that were highly successful. They didn't delve into the sex problem. They didn't dwell on it. There was no reason for it. But today, it's it's, it's dope and it's it's murder, it's mayhem, it's sex, it's everything that that is wrong. But Go like I said to like I said to Larry. I said, go go fight City Hall. You can't do it, Mama. Thank you for the call. Thank you. Let me take one more call before we let you go, Pinky. Good morning. How do you feel about Bob Hope? I can't hear that. How, how do you feel about Bob Hope? Bob Hope. Bob Hope is a very brilliant man, and uh, of course he's a poor man. He has no money. We're all going to take up a collection for him. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him last night on, on, on radio. You know, he has a staff of writers. I, this is what I've been told. For years, he's kept them on salary, and he has, uh, he's, always, he's always got a world of, of uh, material at his beck and call, and being knowledgeable, he has uh, been able to never be at a loss of words. But uh, Bob Hope has, has, has done a lot for the show world, but he's done a lot for himself, too. You know, he's gone over to Europe, done those Christmas shows, and from what I understand, the the, uh, the plane was supplied, the supplies were supplied, everything was supplied to him, and uh, he, he's, uh, he's made millions from something that was given to him. And he's done those shows. Uh, they, he didn't do them for nothing. People think that he gave his services for nothing. Like they say, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis is reputed to to have said that he doesn't get one penny from it. Well, I'm not going to say anything. Ma'am, I thank you for calling. Appreciate it. Pinky, time goes by so quickly. I wish we had more time to talk, but unfortunately, yeah. this, at this particular point, uh, time is as it goes. And, I'll uh, tell you what I'd like to do, and you probably can help me do it. I'm, I'm not the man to go in around looking for a job. I don't need a job. I, what I need is to have contact with the people. I'd like to still be able to meet the people via radio. I want to return to radio, and I'd like to do a minute or a minute and a half spot uh, in between your your radio broadcast. And I'd like very, very much to return to radio. Mm -hmm. And if you can do anything about it, go ahead and do it. I don't care whether you get the money or you give it to a charity. I'd like to do it. We'll keep in contact, and we'll visit again, but it's a, it's a pleasure. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and if there's anything I can do for any worthy cause, for Bloomington or any place else for that matter, please don't hesitate to call me. Thank you, Pinky. Okay. Pinky Lee on WJBC, where we have news in just a minute.